please don't mind this little cable that's kind of hanging. This is the mic that I'm using. And until I realized that this cable is actually showing, I was like, I'm already set it down, you know. I don't want to be putting, you know, setting up a whole other mic. So please don't mind this dangling cable. Um, based on the comments about the left hand, I always get comments about like, what can I do with my left hand or what should I be doing with my left hand? It's kind of like a general problem. Um, and I am making this video because I also know that I had this issue. And I think the thing with the left hand is that as a pianist, at first you seem to think that because naturally the right hand would be doing a lot of stuff, right? Like melodies and improvisation. And you tend to think that the left hand should also be as busy um, or as thought out as the right hand. Which for me actually, one of the freeing things that I had learned going to jazz school, like undergrad and whatever, my piano lecturer had told me, he was like, you know what, the left hand does not have to act like how it does in a classical piece, because I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of you may know if you've watched my other videos is that I have a classical background, meaning that I read a lot of stuff and when you play classical pieces, you know, the left hand is well thought out, it works you know almost perfectly with the right hand and, and so I had that mindset where my left hand has to be thought out which actually it doesn't when you're playing jazz tunes your left hand should be shaping the harmony or harmonic movement of the piece and how we do this is by using shell voicings I've done a few videos about shell voicings but I really just want to drive home this thing about shell voicings. Shell voicings are so important because and then there's the other thing that I just quickly want to get out before I continue further with this video like showing you stuff is this weird concept where people think pianists can't play bass notes or shouldn't play bass notes when they're playing within a band. Like I don't know where people get this but that is wrong. It's not right. Um, you know I've, I've heard this in some instances where I remember when I was, I think I was in my second year or so, and I had, um, of course, when you do jazz studies, you have one of the classes that you'll take is called Jazz Ensemble, okay? Went to Jazz Ensemble, the lecturer who was taking the ensemble is a saxof saxophone player. Of course, because we were, you know, still early in our studies, they're still kind of leaning toward showing us what to do, how to play, how to approach things, you know? They don't do that as much when you're like in your third or fourth year, um, kind of like giving us guidance. So there was this one song that we were playing and the lecturer had stopped and he was like, you know, as a pianist, you shouldn't be playing any bass notes. And I was like, really? Okay, at the time I was like, okay, I didn't know. And then I went to my piano lecturer and I was like, oh, um, the other guy said I shouldn't play left hand uh, bass notes. And he was like, forgive him, he's a sax player. <laughs> and, and I mean, I, another um, sax colleague of mine who, you know, he was wanting to dab a little bit into jazz piano. He, he was a jazz teacher and he was a colleague of mine at the time. And I started to show him a few things and he was like, oh, but the other person who was teaching me piano told me I shouldn't play any bass notes. Look. And I've got one more story for you. I was playing a gig with a bassist and he was like, yeah, and I see you playing bass notes. And I'm like, what is this thing with pianists not, not playing bass notes? I mean, he was stressed because, you know, the drama had kind of switched up with him last minute. So I know he was kind of like nitpicking negatives, like he, his frame of mind was kind of in an odd place. But um, what is it with this thing of saying, Pianist shouldn't play bass notes. Look, a pianist can never do a, the job or play the role of a bass player. Okay, that's the first thing. The role of a bass player is to outline the harmony and to groove only with bass notes. Pianists don't groove bass notes. We play bass notes because they're part of the chord. If I have a D minor seven chord and I don't play the D, then I'm only left with two notes, which is the third and the seventh. And should I, should 
another bass note we put underneath that it's going to be a, another chord you know the bass note is part of the chord so that's just one thing i wanted to get out there and, like don't be afraid to play bass notes i don't know where all of, where that even comes from um but anyway shell voicings is what i was talking about shell voicings are probably going to be your best friend if you're stuck um you know if you find yourself playing like these one note uh basses you know just because you're so busy i think that's what, the other thing with the piano is that you um, it's the kind of simultaneous kind of playing. One of the freeing things about jazz is that I didn't have to make it sound any particular kind of way. My left hand in conjunction with my right hand sounded different on the same piece on a different day. Meaning that if you're playing a line and the line is relatively busy, maybe you'll just hold the left hand down. How about we first quickly go through what shell voicings are, right? The shell voicings are pretty much just the root third and the seventh which is the outline of the chord i'm going to work over a tune called one of my favorite jazz tunes called i'll close my eyes and that let's take the first three chords that song starts on f major seven then it does e half diminished then it does a seven okay maybe the first four chords then it goes to d minor right so by shell voicings i'm either going to do root seven or I'm going to do root and three. Or I guess I could do all three of those. But in terms of keeping it simple for this video, let's just do that. Let's do root seventh only or root third only. And what I'm doing with my left hand, I'm doing root seven for F major, or I could do root three. Now these shell voicings are going to be particularly helpful when you're playing within a band. These are kind of the voicings that you're going to comp with when you're playing in a band. So I have root 7 or I have root 3. If I go down to half, half diminished, E minor half diminished, I do root 3. I go to A7, I do root and 7. I go to D minor, I do root 3. So depending on where you are and where you're going, meaning if I start F major here, maybe it might be easier for me to just do E half diminished, like as root and seventh, right? Because like literally down a step compared to doing this and then jumping here to root and three. So it, it's up to you. Then A7 and then D minor. You pretty much can play the song like that, especially in a band se setup. So I'm going to play the tune like I'm, I have bass accompanying me and I have drum kit accompanying me. things I want to talk to you about before this video ends and I really didn't want it to be a long video two more things in terms of placement you could totally start off by doing you know everything on the beat but if you listen to jazz pianists all across the spectrum, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, they all play their left hand, you know, differently. Um, you should listen to all those records and you do what you want to do basically and how you want to interpret that. So if I'm playing a tune like this, for me, it's kind of more like a call and response. So I'll place, place it like...
right that's more like a call and response vibe but you could do something different like placing it more with the melody Navigate how in your brain you can make the right hand work and make the left hand work but don't ever feel like they have to perfectly fit you know jazz is all about like the improvisation and improvising your way out of the situation and how you say the music you know um, the very last thing I want to talk about I completely forgot about it now up until now I was talking about how you could play in a band setting right but if you were to be playing solo piano of course solo piano you're gonna approach it slightly differently um, and maybe shell voicings won't work all the time they certainly could but if I were to like think about the fact that I'm playing the solo piano maybe you know I could just add like a kind of a half step walking bass line or two feel bass line um, also alternate where I'm placing those shell where I'm placing the chord tones meaning the, the, the third and the seventh and the root. I'm still using mostly shell voicings but sometimes I'm doubling the chord tones where it works um, sometimes I'm in closing to the third right those are little in, uh, interesting things that you pick up when you listen but I think the whole point of this video was to just bring across the fact that firstly you can play bass notes as a pianist second of all is that your left hand should not and does not have to be complicated if you want more complex voicings about left hands jazz piano voicings you can check uh, the video over here if you'd like to support me you can join me on my patreon and give a super thanks okay i'll see you again in the next one bye